<laughs> this. This is what happens when you take doing it yourself to an extreme. This is a high vacuum chamber I built uh, in 2002, some seven years ago. And it was um, fairly near the end product of a, a, a four or five year obsession I had with fabricating optical telescopes, uh, big Newtonian telescopes. Uh, I would I'd take a big hunk of glass, uh, one, two inches thick, eight to sixteen inches in diameter, carve out a, a parabolic surface on the front of it, grind and polish that surface to a precision optical finish, and um, other people with similar afflictions for telescope making would, would normally stop at that point and send their precision optical surface that they had worked for for several hundred hours out to a a coating company that would apply a, a, a optically thin layer of, of aluminum to make a nice big mirror for a, a Newtonian telescope. Well, I, I decided that, well, hell with that, I'm going to build my own vacuum chamber and coat my own mirrors in aluminum because that sounds like fun. You know, I got to admit, it really was. And uh, I learned a lot and it was exciting and I still enjoy it. I just coated some mirrors today for a guy. I got some other videos I'll post up on that here in a bit. And, um, it's kind of nice having a vacuum chamber in your house because you can do stuff with it. But um, So the point of this is I've got about eight minutes, eight and a half minutes to uh, to give a quick tour of it because uh, it's one of those things I've been meaning to do for the last six or seven years and um, I haven't done it yet. So what we have, short story, that's a big metal box. We take all the air in the big metal box and we pump it out. There's two ways of pumping the air out. Actually, there's two procedures for pumping the air out. You have the, the first half of the procedure where we take the big metal box and we got some plumbing down here and we connect the big metal box to the mechanical vacuum pump direct via a couple valves. So the air goes out of here, gets pumped through there and gets pitched overboard. And that makes a pretty good vacuum, but it's not a great vacuum, but it's a pretty damn good vacuum. Uh, if you're doing air conditioning work, it'd be a great vacuum. But it's not good enough for what we're going to do. After you get all the air out that that mechanical pump will do, you, you close the valves here, and you separate the chamber from the mechanical pump, and you take the chamber and you connect it to this diffusion pump on the bottom, which is a high vacuum pump. It's kind of a booster pump. The exhaust of this booster pump is now fed into, through plumbing again and a set of valves, into the mechanical pump, where it then pumps it back out overboard. So the diffusion pump works as a little booster stage to help get the remaining air out of here. When we're done, yeah, there, there's not much left inside that chamber. Uh, it, is, it is damn near a, a perfect, well, not perfect vacuum, but it's a very high vacuum. It's not an ultra high vacuum. Uh, as a point of, of, of discussion for, for how high is the vacuum, it's, well, the steel that it's made from, it's just mild, half-inch thick stainless steel. And at the vacuum level we're at, we're concerned about the porosity of the steel. Hydrogen leaking through the half-inch thick steel. And um, over time, we'll, we'll fill the chamber. Um, and, and your rubber O-rings leak. Not because there's a leak in them, but because the stuff is going through the rubber. Uh, outgassing uh, things that are producing a vapor or gas just from sitting in a vacuum. Um, those things all become concerns. and uh, So, yeah, it's great fun. It's not hard. It, this is 1950s and 60s technology. It would have been pretty state-of-the-art in 1950s and 60s, but, hey, with eBay now and, and the Internet, uh, you can find all kinds of stuff. So, we have, um, we've got six minutes left. Well, five and a half. So, this is the chamber. It's on a big, big slide. For the door to open. I'll step back here so you can see it. So there's a slide on the top and a slide in the bottom and then the door hinges over like that. So I step back so you can see it again and you can see where I had a, a mirror coated in here earlier today. Uh, on this wall here is just a, a bunch of nuts so I can screw bolts in and use those as pegs to support a mirror. On the, the back wall of this metal box are some electrical conductors and on the electrical conductors I'll zoom over here change focus uh, I've got 18 of these tungsten heating elements and um, 
you take a, a little piece of aluminum foil. It, it's I've used Reynolds wrap, but this is specialty aluminum foil. I take a little bit of this aluminum foil and I I pinch it onto this tungsten and I repeat it for all 18 of the tungstens and I pass a DC voltage through the tungsten it makes it glow red just like a light bulb tungsten and um, the aluminum melts turns into a liquid the liquid starts to boil into a vapor the vapor expands in all directions because there's nothing to cool it back down until it hits something solid like the wall or, or the mirror sitting up here and it instantly condenses back into a thin optical film of aluminum uh, like all this nice silver that that's just regular steel it's just got a bunch of aluminum coated over it over time I've played um, here in the bottom of the chamber we got a an opening that's where all the air exits you can see the bolts on the diffusion pump in there and um, you can see a, a copper coil that I use for, for it's called a cold trap eh, I don't know if it really does much but that's where all the air is going out. I've got a high voltage plasma cleaning system. Uh, nothing but a neon sign transformer uh, attached to some thin tungsten wire. And uh, it makes a plasma. The plasma reacts with all the stuff inside the chamber and cleans it. Basically turns the inside of the chamber into a big, uh, looks like a neon sign, but there's no neon in my neon sign. But it still glows like a neon sign. and that glowing action actually helps clean the mirror to do the final coating uh, or the final cleaning prior to coating um, in the back I've got these crude electrical pass-throughs they are um, I drilled a big hole about a one inch hole glued a piece of glass to it drilled a hole in the piece of glass and put a bolt with an o-ring on it and um, and then I got a, a jumper cable that I connect to it to uh, connect to my my big honking transformer down here on a dimmer switch to control how much power goes through the uh, the tungsten and how hot it glows and I found it really it just needs to glow really hot vent valve this uh, I open this and it lets the air back into the chamber so I can open the door when I'm done um, down here we've got all the good plumbing in bits um, first stage this is the valve I open that connects this pipe directly to the mechanical pump which is a Welch 1397 or something it's a one and a half horsepower pump um, you can use little pumps they just take longer bigger pumps faster uh, the other choice is I've got this big valve here that connects the chamber through this valve to this diffusion pump which boosts the, the low vacuum pressure up a little higher comes out goes through another another valve here and then T's back together and into the roughing pump, the mechanical pump, and then overboard, and um, and that's that's pretty much uh, all that. I got some kick butt little gauges here so that I can measure all my vacuums and stuff, and a big bucket of uh, aluminum foil, and and that's that's it. And um, I mount my optics, I pull a vacuum, I clean it with the plasma. Uh, heat up the tungsten so they glow red. Uh, the aluminum melts, turns into vapor, coats everything inside the chamber, and it comes out stunningly shiny and smooth and beautiful, and and it's great fun. And um, I'll post another video up here of how I clean them, how I prep them, and what it looks like going in and out. And maybe I'll I'll edit in a couple of pictures of uh of what the uh, the before and after results look like. And um, I guess that's it. I got a minute left, so that'll be for pictures. And uh, any questions, give me a shot.